Hello and welcome back to Flutter Explained, the YouTube channel where you see everything about Flutter. We are today at the Flutter Firebase conference and I know it is a little bit loud surrounding us, but I have here Eric, Captain Pixel from Twitter. You probably know him. He's very active in game development and please Eric, could you give me a little bit about your background? Who are you and what are you doing? Yeah, for sure. So. I'm Eric. Uh, you, if, if you know me from Twitter, you know that I, I do Flutter game development. Besides my normal Flutter job, I have been a developer since 2008, so it's been a, a couple of years behind me. I, I started with Java, with working with Java Web, but I went through Node.js. I worked with Red. I worked with JavaScript. I even worked with vanilla JavaScript back in the day when we had to do things, you know, all manually. <laughs> And I have been focusing on mobile since 2016. Uh, I actually started with Active Native. Uh, it was my first mobile experience and moved to Flutter in 2018. And a fun fact about my Flutter initi initiation is that I started in Flutter because of game development. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I learned Flutter through Flame. So okay. yeah, I, I became friends with the original creator of Flame. Mm -hmm. His name is Lua. We met on a company that worked together in Brazil. Okay. And that was my first experience with Flutter, and I love it. And I have been working with it, working with Flame until, until today. Fantastic. That's a story about how to come to Flutter. It's not so boring like for me, changing from Samarine away from to Flutter. <laughs> uh, that's not bad. <laughs> Very cool. OK, the next question would be a little bit more about the Flame game engine and Blue OSS. I'm really interested how, how that is working, like Blue Fire. Sorry, Blue Fire is yeah. the name. So what is the Flame game engine and how um, does it fit into the Flutter ecosystem? Yeah, for sure. So Flame is a, a game engine. Uh, like you like, or like to say a modular game engine, so like you can use bits of it, you don't need to use all of there. And it started as basically as a collection of helpers mm -hmm. uh, with methods, with classes, with functions that, that people that would like to build games in Flutter would normally use. And, and that's why it's modular, right? So it's a collection, so don't need to use all of them. And it started because well, in 2018, Flutter was still beginning, was still on its first steps, and this friend of mine, Luan, who got into the, the Start Flame, he learned about Flutter, he learned how Flutter works, mm -hmm. and, and realized that Flutter could be a good platform to, to, to make games. Mm -hmm. And he started experimenting with that, and, and that was the beginning of, uh, of Flame. I have always created games in my, my career. I, I actually became a programmer because I wanted to make games, I wanted to understand how to build them. Mm -hmm. and I, we become friends, we start to build games together, and we start to evolve in Flame to our needs. Mm -hmm. So at the first, when we start, like, like Flame was not really the most priority, but it kind of evolved as we built our games, because our games were, was the goal. We want to build games. We didn't want to build a game engine, the game engine was just a mean mm -hmm. to, 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 to make those games. But as we start to work on Flame, and Flame was open source from day one, people start to use in that. You know, like most of people from the community that went to our Discord server, which back then wasn't Bluefire, it still was Bluefire yet, it was Fire Slime, which was the name of the studio that we wanted to create. Most people that were coming to our community was because they wanted to use Flame not our games. Mm -hmm. So that kind of wasn't what we expected, but it was welcome. So we mm -hmm. always loved to do open source. We were great, happy that people were using the software that we were doing. And then we kind of shift to work on Flame more mm -hmm. instead of doing our games. And as time, time passed, we met more people. We met Johan, we met Hannah, we met Lucas, which you might also know from Twitter. And we kind of rebranded this came to the idea to this open source collective so it would state more clear what was the real purpose of that entity. So Bluflyer is an open source collective, as we like to call, mm -hmm. where we are just friends and we try to maintain some, some projects and the, mo the biggest one is Flame. Okay. So, and as far as I know, Flame is always searching for contributors, is that right? Yeah, of course. Like, during these five years, we had so many contributors there, even pieces of, big pieces of the engine, like the particle system, the camera system, they were all done by committee members that were not part of Bluefire. Mm -hmm. So we, I mean, uh, 
everybody that wants to contribute today are most welcome. There are a lot of things to do, a lot of things to have also definitely welcome. All right, and Hackathon uh, Hacktober is starting soon, so just have an eye on that. All right, um, I was c catching an eye on you today and I was inviting you to that interview and thank you so much that you took the time because I saw you here at the Flutter Fire conference and showcasing the Eternal Flame game that you can see in the background. It was a very nice uh, game and would you like to uh, give us an overview about the game, what inspired you and how it uh, came to the game at the end? Yeah, for sure. So I was I was chatting with Mike from Inventors, which organized the event a couple of months ago, and they wanted and Mike mentioned to me that they want to build this arcade thing on the event so people can have fun, you know, can have a good time. And he knew that I was on the Flame Team. He knew that I built some games, mm -hmm. and he invited me to try to help on that. Okay. So we started to to to. I, idealize this game to think on a game where people could could, could play and, and could have fun in the event so the game is basically a cooperative puzzle game where one player can play as dash and another play with spark you can also play alone but the the, the game really shines when you play with a friend so you can cooperate and the idea of the game is that the, the idea behind of the game is to be a message on how well Fleur and Firebase works together. Because mm -hmm. in the game you have Dash, which has her unique skills, and then you have Sparks, which also have their unique skills, mm -hmm. which is different from Dash. So you need to both work together to overcome puzzles. So like if you just have Dash or just have Spark, you'll never be able to solve the puzzles. Mm -hmm. So that was the idea behind to, to be a game that is fun, but it's also a message to, to the player on, on how Flutter and, and Firebase work well together. I really liked that. It was so on point for that event. <laughs> like, so good job on that. All right. Um, my next question is more technical. You know, my viewers are usually a lot of developers. So the question is like Flutter and game development. Yeah. It, what are like the challenges, advantages that you find out during your career already? And what would you give uh, newcomers into the game development with Flutter with that they can start as fast as possible? Yeah, for sure. So like if you are interested in doing Flurry game development, there are a lot of resources at this point in time for, for you to take a look on. So uh, I would definitely recommend the Flame Engine Discord. We have a thriving community there that is helping everybody all the time. But we also have a thriving community that build games with just Flutter. So if you go to the uh, Google has a, the, the Flutter official page has, a, the Flutter official's documentation has a page specific for games, which can link to many types of resources. We have the casual game toolkit. We have many videos from Philip that, that, that he, he made to teach people how to make games. So really, I would just advise people to, to come to the comments that are existing today and look on the resources, the documentations of it, because they are really, really great. And mm -hmm. they show really how to you know, build a game from, from start to finish, including monetization, deployment to stars, and all, all those other details. Okay, so I will put that down in the link. Uh, I will add the links down in the video description so that you find them. Um, but, but still, the other question, what do you think are the specific advantages and downsides, maybe? Yeah, for sure. So, well, Starting with the downsides, although I mentioned, and I do believe that, that Flutter works super well for, a, for game development, uh, at such point to which we have flame and we have well succeed, the game is built. Even all that is true, Flutter was not conceived to be a gaming engine, right? So there is still some gaps in, in, into features. So for example, we don't have 3D support yet, at least, we might say, oh, but we saw 3D in Flurry 4, and that's true, and we have experimenting with that, but I'll never, I'll not say that that's mature yet for you to start trying, trying to build a real game. It's great for experiments, great to play around, but if you want to do a real game, I would, I would say you should not follow that path. So there are still some gaps that we are trying a lot to try to fill those, but it still take uh, a little bit of time, right? Uh, it's hard for us to compete with like Unity, who is in marketing yeah. for such a long time, that has such a big company behind, you know? So it's a definite downside. So if you choose Flutter to make your game, there is a chance that we will find something missing that it's not that we will not be able to do, but maybe we will need to do it by yourself, you know, like implement it yourself or put a little bit more effort. 
So it, it's part to create the game, to play the game of development, you know, it's like... <laughs> yes, exactly, definitely. Cool. And, and on, on the other side, I think there is definitely one advantage that Flurry Pro is. So I see that one of the cool things about Flame, in my opinion, is that Flame is just a widget. Mm -hmm. So you can compose your application with a Flame game, just like you compose your Flurry application. You know? so, just like, ah, I'm going to put a, a, a toolbar here, I'm going to put a scroll, you know, it's just the same, it's just a flame game widget. So that gives you access to a lot of power from Flutter framework to beauty wise, mm -hmm. which is something that in my experience I found lacking in some game engines. So if your game relies a lot on UIs, you know, like maybe a management game, maybe a strategy game, games that use a lot of UI mm -hmm. for users to manage their resources and stuff like that, I think that's where Flutter and Flame shines a lot. Because mm -hmm. I really had trouble building wise if Unity, even a few other options out there. So I think that's one specific thing that where it shows like a great potential. Okay, great. So, um, yeah, we talked about that, we have that. So the next point would be maybe I hear that you starting with Cherry Bit Studios. It seems that you have like, a, it's a startup. Could you tell a little bit more about that, what you went there? Yeah, for sure. So, like I mentioned in the beginning, our goal was to build games, not to build a game engine. We had this Fire, Fire Slime game studio, and that shifted to, to open source because I didn't have much time to build games. No, Flame was doing so much, was putting so much effort, and I'm not complaining. I love those years. It, it's, it was definitely great. I met so many great people during this journey. But now, I felt that Flame is in this point where we have a great team and an excellent team mm -hmm. of maintainers. We have a super awesome community that help each other. So basically, I have more time to also make games. Mm -hmm. So I decided to create this, what I'm calling Cherry Beat Studio, which is, at this point of this video is not still a legal entity. It's just like mm -hmm. this name that I'm building, and I'm hoping to make this uh, official things, let's say that. <laughs> But is my initiative zone trying to go back to building games, and I think that is good because I'm clearly putting a separation on the work that I put for building game engine and the work that I put for building games. So, mm -hmm. Terry Beat Studios is about building games, games that I want to build and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So also showcasing that at the end. Sounds very cool. I can't wait to see more about that. So also here you find the links down in the video description if I have some. I think you have a website yeah, already running, right? I do. So perfect. Perfect. Okay, so what would you give as an uh, advice for um, yeah, young and aspiring developers that are coming into the space, not only for game development, maybe in Flutter, Firebase, all these kind of things, like coming new to the community, what would you say to them that, uh, yeah, give, make it easier for them to join? Uh, yeah. yeah, that's a tough one because, well, I still haven't breakthrough as an indie developer. I'm still trying, so that, that's hard for me to give any sex to that device. But what made me continue folks and continue to try, and I hope that event will succeed, is to, to make what we love to do, you know? So I love making games. I love making retro games, pixel art games. Many people said to me, like, hey, this is, the market does not like those games that much anymore, you know, like the big market, like if you want to make big bucks, that's not it. But that, that's what I like, like to do, that's what I like to build. And I, I really believe that when you put love to something, to build something, is where you will make it that be a good thing. You know, like, okay, maybe we will win more money with something else, but if you do not like, just the chances that not being a great product, a great game, is higher, in my opinion. So. Yeah. Do what you like to do, and it, the important part is the journey, it's not the end. So have fun doing what you love to do, and, and hopefully to return you something one day. Fantastic. I think that is a very good advice. So with that, I would like to conclude our interview. It was a joy talking with you, my Eric. Thank you that you take the time. So and thank you for all the games that you have developed <laughs> in a couple of years. And Thanks yeah, so I can't wait to see the next uh, steps and the next games. Thanks so much, Max. It was a pleasure talking to you too. So, see ya! See you